Hello there all, welcome back to Yo Sacro. This video is part of the Rubik's Cube series and in this one I want to talk to you about how to get some repetitive tasks done in Houdini. Now the first thing I want to be doing is create the whole repetitive task manually note by note. The reason for this is I want you to have a better understanding of what exactly the computer would have to do when we automate the whole thing and uh, let the computer take care of doing the repetitive work. Now to start creating my scene I'll drop in a simple box and let's dive into it. What I first want to do is uh, select any single primitive here and make it a group so all the operations are applied only on that. So I'll select the top primitive here and make a group out of that. And let's say I call this group select. Now that I have my select group, I want let's say extrude operation applied only on that. So for that I'll drop in an extrude node here in the network view and connecting that in, I'll isolate only the select group and now I can apply the operations I want. Now, let's just say that once I've created this simple extrude, I don't want to stop right here. What I basically want is um, once this extrude is done, I want to select again the top face here and apply another extrude and then again another extrude on top of that. To do this, anywhere I have an extrude here already, I could just copy this, paste that and reconnect it to my extrude. But you can see this gives me a very odd result. Reason for this is this poly extrude 2 is also working on the same select group, but the entire group has now changed. If I come back to my group, we can middle click here and see there is one primitive in the select group. Whereas if I come back to my poly extrude and middle click, we can see there are five primitives in the select group. The reason this has happened is because all these new primitives here on the top which are created are all the children of the same primitive which belong to that group. So all the children have been put into the same group by the new extrude node. I don't really want the extrude to do all that. All I want the extrude to give me is a select group again here at the top and I don't care what these uh, other polygons here on the side are for. So what I could do is again come back to the extrude here. Let's delete the last one and I'll jump into the group section here turn on create output groups and I'll tell the front group this time is going to be called select again. So S-E-L-E-C-T on that and now if I middle click on this poly extrude I have only a single primitive in the select group so that is done. But there are two additional groups which are created the poly extrude back and the extrude side. I don't really need these guys so I can just select the whole thing and remove the text from these two boxes and that basically gets rid of those additional groups. So now I have my original select group back again. This time if I copy my poly extrude and just drop it in after the original one, you can see the extrude just happens the way I expect it to. Not only that, if I come back to my original poly extrude, let's say I apply a certain amount of rotation and I'll copy that, paste that again, you should be able to see that this new extrude also does the same thing. But it's kind of laborious always copy pasting the same extrude. I want all the operations or all the translate and rotate values from the original extrude on the second one. To do this, simply I can right click on this extrude and create a reference copy. What a reference copy does is that it references each and every one of these channels which are available back to the original extrude or the original node it was referenced from. So if I change any values on this original node, all of them will change on the next one. So now if I connect these two guys together, I can go back to my original extrude and let's say I change the rotation value. You can see it's creating a twisting effect. Not only that, I can make several of these extrude nodes. So I'll just paste in a few of these and connect them. So now I've gone ahead and connected 16 of these extrude nodes one after another. And you can see it's giving me some very interesting results. And now if I go back to my original extrude and change even the slightest options, you can see it gives me some very cumulative results. It gives me some very different ones. I can change inset options, I can change scale, I can change all of these different attributes and it gives me some very interesting results. So let me just make it a little bit more interesting here. So as you can see, I'm able to get these repetitive extrudes to give me some very interesting models. 
but this is just an operation this all this duplication is just laborious like I don't actually want to go duplicate the same extrude so many times though the result I get is very interesting this is just cumbersome I don't want to be doing this so let's see how exactly I could go ahead and repeat all of these nodes without having to duplicate them myself so I can get similar results without having to go ahead and duplicate the same node several times like this Now the first way for repeating the same operation several times over, I'll drop in a for each sop. So this is basically the same thing as a for each loop in programming, where given a set of conditions, the computer does a few things given in order till the conditions are met. So the same thing happens here during modeling in Houdini. So I'll just go ahead and connect the group into the for each sap and I'll change a few options here first. First of them is that for every single number that I provide, not points or primitives or groups, but every number that I provide, I want Houdini to do something. For now, I'll just go ahead and tell the number range is just one. This makes sure that the operation is applied only once for now. Next, also, I don't want all the results to be merged into a single one. I want the results applied on top of the previous results. So I'll just make sure I turn this merge results option off. We also know that the operation I want to apply is this poly extrude. I'll just copy that one. Now, I can dive into the for each sub. So let me turn on the display flag and jump into it. You will see that this one has a simple node called each node. The for each sub always comes with this and there are loads of expressions here. So don't touch anything in this node, leave it as it is. And here I'll drop in my extrude node. I can go ahead, connect the extrude node to the each sub, enable the display flag. You'll immediately see that the first operation, the first extrude is applied. Now coming out of my for each sub, if I want to go ahead and reapply whatever operations are happening in the for each sub, all I need to do is increase the number range. If I go ahead and increase it to 2, what it's going to do is reapply the same operation once more. So, first the SOP is going into the for each. It goes ahead, deletes everything else apart from what model it requires. It applies the operation, sends out the model, again retakes the same model, does the operation, again retakes the same model, does the operation. It just loops through. So right now it's doing it only two times. But we know we had created this node till about 16, 17 times. I can just go ahead here and type in that amount. So let's say about uh, 20 and immediately I have extrude applied 20 times. And as you can see, it's way faster than having to do it all the way here in this manner. Now, this is all well and good. But here on this particular extrude, I had the option of changing these values and seeing the result. So if I just enable the display flag here, I can change the value on the initial extrude and we can see the entire model change. I want to be able to do the same thing here with a for each loop. So let's see how to add in the same functionality. Now, if I want to change anything which is happening on this for each sub or inside the for each sub, I need to be able to have all those parameters right on this node out here. So to do this, I'll go into the edit parameter interface for this for each sub. And let me start by creating a folder to hold in all these parameters. I'll call this just extrude. What I want to do is make sure I have all the parameters, every single thing which I have on this extrude available back onto this um, node or in this folder. If I want, I can go ahead, drag each and every single parameter onto this folder, but that's too cumbersome. Instead, I can switch over to from node here at the top. Here under for each loop, I have the extrude node. I can drag and drop the extrude node under this extrude folder. What this does is just brings all the parameters in and drops them in. If I hit apply, you can see all the parameters here on this particular extrude are now linked back up to all the parameters which have just been created. So now this work is done. I can just hit apply and let's close this. I can come here to the for each loop, try to change any rotation values or let's say any scale values and you can immediately see all of that takes effect. But this is not all I want. I also want to be able to easily edit this number range. Right now I have the slider which is not as intuitive. So I'll go back into edit parameter interface and here I'll create an integer slider because as you can see it does not actually affect anything if it's at point number values. It only affects things if it's at 13, 14 and such. So 
I'll go ahead, drag and drop an integer value. I'll call this count. I'll go ahead, accept that. I'll copy this count value and paste that as a relative reference on the number range. What this helps me do is have a single slider which controls the growth of this extrude basically. But I don't really need all of these additional values here at the top. So I can again go back to my edit parameter interface and I can actually hide every single one of these options so the entire node looks a bit neater. Also, I'll just select the extrude folder I have. I don't want it to be a tabs folder because it actually creates this tab-like uh, option here. So you can see I always have this extrude sticking out. I'll just go ahead and make it a simple folder. And now it's just integrated into the interface. It looks a lot neater. I'll hit accept. And now I have a for each sub, which actually it helps me control a lot more about what I want to be happening on this model and not only that, it also helps me duplicate the node as many number of times as I want without having to do it manually. I can just go ahead and increase the count value. So that's the way I can use a for each sub to do the same operation. Okay guys, so that's it for this particular video. Here we saw how to use a for each sub to create repetitive tasks in Houdini. In the next one, we are going to look at the SOP solver to do something similar. In the meantime, if you have any doubts, critiques or suggestions, they're all welcome in the comment section below the video. I hope you guys are finding these tutorials useful and uh, I hope you guys are having a great time. I'll see you in the next video.